Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Every once in a while, we have technical difficulties. Amen. Yeah. Every once in a while, we have technical difficulties, and we have to do what we have to do. Amen. I don't even see me in a square, so y'all have. If, if I'm not in the camera, or you can't hear me, speak up and tell me, okay? okay. All right. Um, I'm going to read scripture again. Uh, I think it's important that I do. Amen. Now concerning spiritual gifts, I'm reading from the NASB, New American Standard Bible. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. Oh, I'm sorry. 1 Corinthians 12, 1. And I'll start over. 1 Corinthians 12, chapter. And that will be our text for this entire series. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be unaware. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to uh, dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make, you kn make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God says Jesus is a curse. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries, and the, but, and the same Lord. And there are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, the effecting of miracles. And to another, prophecy. And to another, the distinguishing of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things distributing to each one individually just as he wills. Amen. Amen. I thank and praise God today. Amen. For all this happened so far. I enjoyed myself in the praise and worship. I learned some some years ago to praise and worship uh, on YouTube. And when I did that, I didn't realize that one day we that would be our praise and worship. Amen. But... I did, amen, and, and I enjoy myself, I, I just let it go, amen, I, I, have to, I mute my video, amen, so that y'all don't see me cutting up, amen, but anyway, here we go, amen, the, 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 the nine spiritual gifts that, 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 that we are talking about in this series, we started last week a little bit on discerning the spirits, and we're going to pick it up there. But I want to go back and, and give some background for those of you who were not here, because I do see people here today that were not here yes, uh, last week. Uh, we started off saying, uh, in the first chapter in the King James, it says, I, I would not have you ignorant. Uh, ignorant uh, can mean not knowing, but ignorant can also mean knowing wrong. So I want you to know it. And I want you to know it according to Scripture, best I can do. Hmm? All right. I'm going to try to do this teaching in such a manner that it's easier for everybody to remember everything. Um, the teaching, the the teaching part of me has come out, and I, I I'm going to give you a lot of repetition. So, repetition is the way we teach. Ain't that right, Sabrina? Amen. <laughs> For this teaching, I've arranged the gifts in the groups of three each. The revelation gifts, the gift of discerning the spirits, the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, excuse me, the gift of word of knowledge. These three reveal something. The vocal gifts, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, and the gift of prophecy. These three say something. The power gifts. The gifts of healing, the gift of faith, and the gift of working of miracles. These three do something. Let me do it again. The revelation gifts, the gift of discerning of spirits, 
the gift of word of knowledge, the gift of word of wisdom, excuse me, and the gift of word of knowledge. These three reveal something. The vocal gifts, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy. These three say something. The power gifts, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles. These three do something. The revelation gifts reveal something. The vocal gifts say something. The power gifts do something. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to take them in the order that I have given them to you and, 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 and in the classifications. Okay, in the revelation gifts, we're going to briefly define the, the revelation gifts. Brief, a very brief definition, okay, a one-liner. Okay, the gift of discerning the spirits reveals the origin of the manifestation. The gift of word of wisdom reveals something in the future. The word of knowledge reveals something in the present or the past. The vocal gifts, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues, a message by the Spirit given in tongues. The gift of interpretation of tongues, interpretation of a message in tongues. The gift of prophecy, a message given to edify, exhort, and comfort. The power gifts, the gifts of healing. A manifestation by the Spirit to heal. The gift of faith, a spoken gift that takes you through a situation. The gift of working of miracles, a miracle the Spirit performs through a believer. It changes the situation. Hmm? It changes the situation. Amen. Man. We're going to start out. I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to get away from my notes. Okay? The gift of discerning of spirits, some translations say distinguishing of spirits, and that is the proper definition, distinguish. It distinguishes who is talking or who is performing the manifestation. Okay? There are different manifestations. In this lesson, I'm going to expose some things that's going on in the church right now. I'm going to expose some, some occultist practices that people are doing to to deal with and make themselves look like they're prophets. Amen. Amen. And 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 and, 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 and discerning of spirits is going to help me to do this. Amen. Amen. Distinguishing of spirits. The the gift distinguishes whether a manifestation is of God or some other spirit. By by definition, this gift has to operate for all the gifts. Well, how do you say that, Brother Paul? Because the first thing that we want to know about a gift is, and, and, and the Spirit lets us know by witness of the Spirit, is it of God or not? If it's not of God, there is a witness in the Spirit. There is a check in your spirit to let you know that ain't God. Amen. Amen. So, so, so every time there is a manifestation all nine gifts, the first thing that has to happen in order for us to, to, to distinguish what it is, is to distinguish what spirit is speaking. Hmm? If it's not a, it don't necessarily matter if there are other spirits. What we want to know is it of God. And God don't, might not tell you what spirit it is, but what he will do is tell you it is not him. Amen. Amen. And over time, you'll, you'll begin to sense that these different spirits, and you can recognize them yourself. Amen. Amen. Come on. Ah. The question may be asked, if the spirit that's manifesting is not God, then who is it? The answer, it could be a human spirit, could be the person. A human spirit? Could be an angel, which is okay. Angels would deliver messages. Amen. Or it could be a demon spirit, which is not okay. Hmm? All right. Now, next section, and we're going to stay here for a while, and hopefully we get through this and get through the scriptures. Amen. Now, on every believer, you hear me? Every believer has discerning of spirits. I know 
you think that some people don't. <laughs> I've heard people say they have no discernment at all. They're saying they don't have discernment of spirits. But they do if they're a Christian. Amen. They might not be using it, but they have it. Amen. I know. I, I've said it myself. That's the reason I can say you said it. Because we're all like-minded. Amen. All right. The gift operates on every believer. And this is the way it operates on every believer. It checks your human spirit to let you know that something said or done is not right. It's called a witness of the spirit. It's telling you, oh, that ain't right. Have you ever experienced that? Hello? Anybody ever experienced that? Raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Okay. Discerning the spirits will also let you know that it is it is of God, also by nudging your human spirit and, and let you know that it is the Holy Spirit. It's a witness of the Spirit still. How many of you have, have experienced that? Raise your hand. Amen. 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 Has someone ever given you a word and you felt it straight in your human spirit? It just set you on fire. You knew it was oh, yeah. God speaking. Oh, yeah. That's the witness of the Spirit to let you know that it is of God. It is God that's speaking to you. Hello? Yes, right. Hey, are, are you with me? Oh, yeah. All right. Now, now, now. Have you ever been in church and the preacher was preaching and the word that he preached, not the whole word, but one part of that word seemed like it went down your mouth and down in your spirit and set you on fire? Has that ever happened to you? That's for me. <laughs> now, now. All of this is a witness of the Spirit of God is letting you know this is of Him. Specifically, it might be 10,000 people in the church, but when He comes right down to it, He's speaking to you. Thank you, Jesus. Now, one of the things that the Spirit does in preaching, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but one of the things that the Spirit does in preaching, He takes what the preacher preaches and divides it to all 10,000 people. 5,500 or 5. It don't matter. But right. he gives the body of Christ what it needs. This is what it means to you. I remember before I started pastoring, I used to hear Pastor Carter say, uh, my, 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 my bishop, I used to hear him say that people would come up to him and tell him about something that, that he said in the message. And he said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> He didn't say it to them, but he was, but he was saying to himself, I didn't preach that. And then somebody else would come and say, oh, when you did this and you did that. And, and I, as I began to pastor, I had that happen to me. And I'm trying to figure out, oh, the Spirit gave them what they needed out of what I said. It interpreted what I said just for Sabrina, just for Rudy, just for Calvin. Just for Jasmine and Josh. What? Whereas it might be commonplace to one person and it sets another person on fire. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because that's the work of the Spirit. Mm. Have you ever felt someone was coming to your house and later on they showed up? <laughs> Hands going up again. That's discerning of spirits. Hmm? Has your phone has your phone ever rang? Hello, and you knew where it was before you looked at your phone. <laughs> Hello. Yes. Now, now I'm gonna go a little further on that. Now, all that's discerning the spirits. Now, listen to this. One day I was sitting in my house when we were living in Bladensburg. I'm sitting in my house, and as I'm sitting in my house, the phone rings. The Lord said, that's brother, and he wants this. I pick up, it's brother, and he wants this. <laughs> exactly what, what he said. Now, Something just dropped in my spirit. <laughs> Discerning the spirits is not just that feeling. 
but it's also it's revealing what spirit is at work. Mm. One night, one night, I had a dream. Okay? Discerning spirits works in visions, it works in dreams. Okay? Now, I had the dream, and in the dream, a person came up to me. We were, I was at Revival Temple during the time. A person got out of their car, came up to me as I was walking down the sidewalk, and invited me to dinner. And in the dream, I told them, no, thank you. You're serving more than dinner. Amen. Amen. I won't go too much further. Amen. Now, that next morning was Sunday morning. I'm walking down the sidewalk. I ain't thinking about that dream. And the person pulls up in the same spot as it was in the dream. Gets out of the car, had on the same dress. Said the exact same thing that, that, she, that I saw in the dream. Hello. And I, re, and I remembered it. Once I saw her get out, I remembered the dream. And I said exactly what I said in the dream. Hello. But but it, but 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 what was revealed that she had on that dress? No, that wasn't important. That she parked where she parked? No, that wasn't important. What was revealed? What was revealed was don't go over to that house. What they're doing over there is not for you, and and is not of the right spirit. Hello, hello. See, we're talking about the revelation gifts, right? Discerning the spirits reveals what spirit it is. It don't have to be a demon for it to be discerning the spirits. Hello? Sometimes when God uses us, he shows us people. He shows people. Right. Sometimes it's the person. Sometimes it's a silhouette. Right? You don't know, but you know who it is. Right. You know, if it's a silhouette, you know who that silhouette is. It's a white silhouette, you know who it is. Or if it's an unsaved person, it might be a black silhouette. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> all right? Now, now we got to that point. We got through that. Now, did all of y'all raise y'all's hands when I asked about all these things? Yes. Yes, you did. Because y'all been around a while. Y'all been around long enough that you have experienced this in your life. Right. And it's discerning the spirits that operates on every believer. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and on, on my notes it says, no Christian should be fooled or taken advantage of because of discerning the spirits. Right. You say, well, Brother Paul, why is there so many Christians that, 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 that seem to have no discernment? Are they saved or unsaved? I don't know. It's not my place to say. But, I do believe that we are geared and wired. Some people seem to be geared and wired as followers. And they just seem to follow anything that anybody say, regardless of that. And then we have those that are, that are partial to certain people and they are received from them openly without even... Uh, uh, testing it to see if it's of God. We have those people. Yeah. So there are many reasons why people are misled, but for the, for, the, for, the, for, the, for the most part, most of the time, I can't take a person's salvation just because they missed something, because I've missed a few things myself. But one thing is for sure, if you're not in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, even though the Holy Spirit is in you, you're going to miss a lot. You're going to miss a lot. And if you don't take the time to fellowship with God in His Word, in prayer, hello, His Word, in prayer, in praise, in mm -hmm. worship, yeah. hmm? you need all of that. You need all of that to develop into the person that God would have you to be. And according to Scripture, according to the uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14th chapter, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, when you pray in tongues, you build yourself up. 
you sensitize yourself to the moving of the spirit in you. See, a lot of times people think that that when they speak in tongues, it's the Holy Ghost speaking. But actually, it's the Holy Ghost that gives it to you, and you have to speak it. Hello? Now, now I'm, I'm going to stop right there, and let's, let's do some application on what I just said. When you're ministering to somebody for them to be filled with the Holy Spirit, okay, remember what I just said. The Holy Spirit is in there, but he's not in your spirit. He's down in there beside your spirit. And he nudges your spirit to speak in tongues. And it's you that speak in tongues. Your spirit speaks in tongues. 14th chapter of, 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 of 1 Corinthians, you'll see that. Amen. When, when, I, when a man speaking on the tongue, it's his spirit that speaketh. I think it's the fourth verse. But anyway, <laughs> the, the situation is this. Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Let's turn there because everybody ain't on, a, on, on one accord with this. 1 Corinthians 14th chapter. And the fourth verse. You got your Bibles? Amen. You ready? Almost? Got it. Got it. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue, 14.4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. But he that prophesied edifies the church. That ain't it. Uh, da, 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 da. Hold on, that's not the one. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. He edifies himself, but that's not the one I want. Da, 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 da. Where is it at? Da, 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 No. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yep. Fourteen. Fourteen. Thank you, Rudy. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prays. Whose spirit? The Holy Spirit? No. My spirit. My spirit prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. My spirit is the doing the praying. Holy Spirit gives it to me, but I have to do it. Now, you say, what's the application of that, Brother Paul? The application of that is this. If you know that, then you have to realize, you have to let the pe person know that you are praying for to receive the Holy Spirit. When you pr let them know the Holy Spirit is in there, you have to do the praying. The Holy Spirit ain't going to take over and, and pray for you. He doesn't do that. I know a lot of people were taught that. I was taught that initially. I learned better. <laughs> Amen. Now, now, the Holy Spirit is in you for us true, but you have to speak it. You remember, you remember back in the day they used to, they used to tell us to, 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 to say Jesus, 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 till you get tongue-tied. <laughs> Hello? And then we learned that the Holy Spirit has already been given. Don't sit there and wait on him. He's going to do it. You say, well, Brother Paul, that, well, that worked for a while. Yeah, it did work. I, 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 I ain't knocking it. But I do remember uh, uh, when, 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 I got, when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, I think Reverend Owens was in revival at Revival Temple. And and he prayed for me and to be to to get filled with the Holy Spirit. I left out of there nothing. All the way home, I could feel the Spirit. All the way home, we could feel the Spirit. And we were renting this house way out in Fort Washington. And my wife and I, we got in the house, and I got to babbling and and and, <laughs> and carrying on. And my wife and went to bed. We got to go to work next morning. <laughs> and, and I'm. And, Chitter chatting and all of that other stuff. My wife got sick of that stuff. She got up and laid hands on me, speaking in tongues, and went back to bed. <laughs> I started speaking in tongues. We had a bedroom, it was the whole width of the house. 
Okay? The bedroom was the whole width of the house. And I had plenty of room to tear up. <laughs> Amen. Because when the power hit, I just started speaking in tongues all over the place. Now, you say, well, what, what they got to do with anything? The spirit was in me. Until I until I released myself to 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 go with what was happening on the inside, I did not I did not speak. But once but once she laid hands on me and released that at me, oh yes. Now, now you say, well, brother Paul, what's going on there? Let me let me share with something that you're gonna we're gonna get to later on the last part of this series. When she laid hands on me and I spoke instantly at that point, that's the gift of faith in operation. Anytime you lay hands on somebody and they speak in tongues instantly, that's the gift of faith. Or you're casting out devils with, with his word. That's, that's part of the latter teaching. But I wanted you to, to bring that in, okay? Amen. Oh, amen. Now, <sighs> Let's look at some scriptures on this. Amen. Let's do Mark 8.33. Mark 8.33. Mark 8 and 33. Y'all know this story, but and I'm not going to go back for context's sake, but I am going to read... Um, I want I want to share it. I want to share this. Let's look at 30. Or 31. And he began to teach them, talking about Jesus, that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. And he, and he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him. How are you going to rebuke the Lord? And when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, Get thee behind me, Satan. Wait a minute. The Bible said he rebuked Peter. And then he says, Get thee behind me, Satan. So what it's saying is that Satan was the person that, that, that influenced Peter to take the Lord and rebuke the Lord. Hmm? That came from, from Satan. Discerning the spirits let him know that that was not Peter, but Satan. Hello? It revealed what spirit was in operation. Was it a human spirit? No. It was a demonic spirit. Amen? Now, you'll see that. You'll see that same uh, scripture in Matthew 16.23. Alright? 16.23, it says about the same thing. But it says, But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art offense unto me. Alright? So, so basically what I want you to see is that in scripture, even Jesus, you know what I can do? It's just, it's not 100%, but very close. Just about everything Jesus did that's recorded in the, four, in the four Gospels. Just about everything he did, I can see it in Scripture as one of the nine manifestations of the Spirit or the five ministry gifts. He said ministry gets five. Yeah, we call them five-fold ministry, but they're actually ministry gifts. And, and that's another teaching, and I'm going to probably do it on the tail end of this because it's very, very exciting to see. Amen. But everything that Jesus did can be categorized. Everything he said and did can be categorized into these gifts. And, 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 well, Brother Paul, why would Jesus do that? I believe he was getting all of these gifts into the earth realm. Hello. <laughs> he was getting the gifts into the earth realm. Now, a lot of these gifts, you, you can see all the way through the Old Testament, especially working of miracles. Working of miracles is very prevalent in the Old Testament. Hmm? But the gift of healing was in, 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 was in view too. 
Hmm? So let's look at let's look at what 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 something else that 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 that, that happened. Very familiar scripture. Are y'all satisfied with this? Y'all understand this? Y'all understand what what happened here? Do you see how how it was revealed? Can you see that it was revealed that it was not the, that spirit? Now let's look at another passage of scripture in the book of Acts. I know y'all know exactly where I'm going, don't you? Don't y'all know where I'm going? Anybody know where I'm going? Yeah, okay. See, that's the discerning of spirits. You, because the discerning of spirit will get will will let you know what's how, how the flow is going in the church. <laughs> Amen. I just love it. I just love it. Let's go to Acts 16. Amen. Y'all, y'all know the story. You know the story. Amen. That's 16 and 17. Let's start at 17. Okay, let's look at start at 16. And it came to pass, as he went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same soothsayers followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, who show unto us the way of salvation. And this did they many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to, to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of, the, of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out of that same hour. Well, you say, well, seemed like they were saying the right thing. They were saying, seemed like they were saying the right thing because they were servants of the Most High God. But he... They listened to that for a while, but he knew discerning a spirit let him know that they're saying that, but it's not by the right spirit. Huh? It revealed which spirit it was, and it's not. And he cast the devil out of the, of the soothsayer. Amen. Amen. Now, that that's discerning of spirits. That's discerning of spirits. Amen. And 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 when you look at those kind of things, you, you it makes you wonder. Makes you wonder sometimes. See, the devil knows a little bit of scripture. <laughs> and he can use it on you. You say, well, Brother Paul, you told us about this stuff. You showed us something in scripture. What about you? Well, I, I told you one thing. Let me show you, let me share one, one thing with you. And 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 I and I want you to understand. I want you to understand something. This is weird. <laughs> it's way out there. But open your spiritual ears and see if it be of God. Amen. Amen. When I was when we had the church in Edmonston, I was also trying to start a church in Baltimore. In Westport section of Baltimore, if you know Baltimore, you know Westport is really a bad. It's right beside uh, uh, what's the name of that place? But uh, Westport is a bad section, okay? But anyway, I'm doing a Bible study for a recovery group. The recovery group is 22 men, 22 men that are released from prison. I've been there when the when the marshal come in and they come in in handcuffs. And once he signs, once the director signs for them, they take the handcuffs off of them and they become a part of this community. So it was 22 guys I did, uh, for about two years I did a uh, uh, Bible study for them every Tuesday. Amen. So I did my Bible study one Tuesday night and I'm on my way home. And as I'm on my way home, I, I notice, and this is the Spirit of God, I notice that there is a cloud over my head. And in, out of this cloud came cursings, cursing God, cursing, just curses, curses. All, every curse word you can imagine was coming out of, and I'm saying, Lord, what in the world is this happening? It's about a 30-minute drive from Westport to Bladensburg, and I drove there, and I, the whole time, I'm upset with this thing, right? And I go home, take a shower, 
get in the bed, and there it is again, over my bed, all these curses. And I said, Lord, what's going on? Why is, and what is this? And the Lord said, rebuke it. So I said, demonic spirit, leave. And it left. Oh, I should have done that a long time ago, right? Right. But, 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 but listen to what the Holy Spirit said. The Holy Spirit said, that was a cursing spirit. He said a cursing spirit. Oh, it could have been a cussing spirit. Whichever one you want to use. <laughs> cursing, cussing. It was a cursing spirit. I said a cursing spirit. I ain't never heard. I had heard of it, but I thought it was, you know, that was something the old folks said. You know, I didn't understand that. He said, it was a cussing spirit. I said, a cussing spirit? He said, yes. He recognized you because you used to have a cussing spirit. You said, well, Paul, you had a spirit? Yes, I was, I was unsaved, and I had a cussing spirit. Did you cuss? Yes, I cussed. I, I didn't cuss like a sailor. I was a sailor. <laughs> Understand what I'm saying here. Every word out of my mouth was a cuss word. But I was yielding myself to a, to a spirit and didn't even know it. Hello. So Jesus said, Paul, you had a cussing spirit. They recognized you because you used to have a cussing spirit. So they tried to get back with you. If you had yielded yourself to them and started cussing, then you would have had the problems with that cussing spirit influencing you for, for until somebody got you delivered. But that's discerning of spirits, isn't it? What spirit is that? Now you know the, the scripture tells us nobody can occur, can, 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 can curse God and, and, and it be by the spirit. No, no. So he revealed to me who it was. Hmm. I remember this young man came to Revival Tumpa some years ago. And he used to speak in tongues. I'm, I'm, I'm going to rattle your theology right now. He used to start speaking in tongues and he would just speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues, speak in tongues, real fast, real fast, real fast. He was just speaking in tongues. So fast you could hardly, you, you, know, you, you know he's speaking in tongues. One day, Pastor Carter got tired of that. <laughs> and he said, you foul spirit, come out of him. And the man jumped up and started running around crazy, right? So we called him and brought him up to the aisle, brought him up to the altar, and start praying for him, right? And 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 I think it was Bishop Carter that said, "Who are you?" And he said, "My name is Gore." Amen. He said, he said "Well, why are you telling us this?" Because it was re his name was revealed, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it right there. We cast the devil out of him. It wasn't three months later, somebody else came in with that same tone, talking real fast. Called them out. Who are, what is your name? Gore again. <laughs> Gore getting around in Southeast, you know. <laughs> so, not only will you know as you are doing these things, not only will you know that it's a or evil spirit, or a demonic spirit, or an angelic spirit, you will also know, you may know their name. Legion, for we are many. Hello? Then uh, Jesus cast out a, a spirit of infirmity in the woman that was bowed over. Am I right? It was a spirit of infirmity. A spirit of infirmity. Some sicknesses are caused by spirits. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, listen to this, listen to this. It all, it all, it all goes together. I, I can show it to you. I just don't want to go right now. I'm going to flow with this. The Bible says that Jesus cast the spirit out of this man. And it was dumb. 
And when the spirit was gone, the dumb man spoke. Listen to what I said. Je Jesus cast the dumb spirit out of the man. And when the spirit was gone, the dumb man, dumb means you, you can't talk, the dumb man spoke. Well, what's significant about that? The first part, the spirit was dumb. The spirit couldn't talk. <laughs> Hello? The spirit was dumb. So when he got in and he, he got into that man, the man took on the same characteristic that he took on. Hello? The spirit was dumb and the man was dumb. Once the spirit was gone, there was nothing wrong with the man. The man could talk. Hello? But that was revealed. Are you with me? That's revealed. And when something is revealed like that, God knows what he's doing. And this is why when we pray for people, we got to be careful just going up laying hands on people. Hmm? It, I will tell you this and you can search it out for yourself. I want you to hear this and I want you to understand this. Jesus never laid hands on nobody to cast the devil out. Matter of fact, when Jesus laid hands on people, it was people he wasn't supposed to lay hands on. Like the lepers. <laughs> he laid hands on, you ain't supposed to touch the leper. But Jesus laid hands on the leper. Hmm? You have to be careful who you lay your hands on. Another thing, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to get off these demons for a minute here. Jesus, Jesus, never, Hello, he never got down on the floor and wallowed with demons. He cast out devils with his word. Remember when the when the when the when the man brought his son to the to, to the disciples and they couldn't cast him out? Remember, he, he he said, I brought him to your disciples and your disciples couldn't cast him out. He came up to Jesus. Fell down on the floor. The Bible says he was he was foaming and he was manifesting all kind of things and stuff. And Jesus was sitting up there talking to the man's to 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 the guy's to the guy's father. He said, "How long have you been like this?" <laughs> and you, if you know the story, you know what I'm saying. He, Jesus is talking to the man. He said, "How long have you been like this?" Oh, he's been like this a long time. Oftentimes he he go, he falls in the fire and trying to kill himself. And and he said, "If you can't do nothing else." Help me. If you can't help him, help us. <laughs> and Jesus is just sitting there having a conversation with the man. The man is just foaming at the mouth. What I say to you and I submit to you, and, 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 and I'm, I'm going to say this because I want you to understand it. And if you get this, you will never do it again. That's what they're supposed to do on their way out of a person. They're supposed to fall on the ground and wall around like a like a pig and then foaming at their mouth, acting like they did. All that stuff is manifestation that they're coming out. I know, I know what you're going to say. That's not what happened in my church. What happened in my church is if we we lay hands on somebody or if we praying for somebody and, and the demon manifests itself and start talking, the whole church almost jumps on it. Ain't that true? At least all the ministers and the deacons, hmm, jump on it, don't they? Start speaking in tongues. Oh, I hate the devil. And the, but he's playing with y'all. Usually, you, usually when that happens, all you got to do, you're already commanded. you already commanded that devil out. We have to learn to command. Jesus has given us the authority to command. If you're an, if you're an ordained minister, you can command things. You don't have to you don't have to beg God. You can command some things to happen, and you do have the authority to cast out devils. It's already given. It's given in the Word. It's given in the Word. If God has called you to preach, you have the authority. You have that authority to call a devil out, and you don't have to get on the ground and wallow with him. Call him out. Let him manifest. 
While he manifesting, you can take care of some business. Amen. I don't do it no more. I've been there. I did that. I already did that. I don't do it no more. Hmm. And once I find out it's a devil, I don't lay my hands on him. You might be praying for somebody. Hello. You might be praying for somebody and, they, and, and the devil manifests. You might have your hands on them and they may manifest. So at that time, take your hands off that many people. You don't, you, 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 you don't need that. Cast out devils with your words. Cast out devils with your word. Cast out devils with your words. Amen. Now, mm, mm, mm. there's a scripture in John 5, 14 that we're going to look at. This is going to be the last one we look at. Amen. John 5, 14. Amen. It's getting warm up in here. In, in the fifth chapter, the fifth verse says, A certain man was there which had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been a long time in the case, he said, he said unto him, Will you be made whole? The impotent man said, answered and said, I have no man when the water is troubled. He put me into the pool, but I am coming after somebody stepped down. Y'all know the man that was healed at the pool of Shalom, right? Hmm? And Jesus healed the man, right? But in the 14th verse is where we want to go. Afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more. Lest a worse thing come upon you. You say, well, Brother Paul, how is that discerning the spirits? He, dis he distinguished what was the cause of his problem, of his sickness. He wasn't sick because he, he caught a cold. He was sick because of sin. The sin it was a sin in his life that opened him up for, for, for that sickness. Hello? I know y'all going to be mad at me now. But Paul, you mean it? You, look. I took Nuthetic Counseling with, with uh, Jay Adams. Nuthetic Counseling uh, says that uh, all sin is, is caused by... All, all sickness is caused by sin. Excuse me. All sickness is caused by sin. Jay Adams, he's, he's, he, he, he's been around a long time. A lot of places use his material. I don't believe that. I don't believe all sin. I believe some sin. <laughs> I don't believe all sin. I, there is no blanket case. Okay? I don't, I don't, I don't, no cookie cutter approach to ministry. There is none. So don't let nobody tell you all you got to do is this. It's not true. But some sins can open you up to sickness. Now, Jesus was ministering. Listen to this. Jesus was ministering. When Jesus was ministering, Jesus, the scripture says, I, got, I wish I had it in front of me right now. The scripture says that the leprosy left. The leprosy left. And he healed him. The leprosy left. Follow me? Are you following me? The leprosy left. Well, Brother Paul, I don't quite get it. That sickness, that sickness could be a demon in it by itself. Hello? That sickness could be a, 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 a demon itself. Hello. I used to live. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share this. I'm, I'm going to finish up here. I used to live beside Suitland High School. They had a track. I loved it. I was up to three and a half miles a day. I would run that track three and a half miles a day. It was winter time and I said, I don't care about no winter. I'm running this track. I caught the flu. 
And I went out on that track and I said, maybe I'll just do a mile today because I got the flu. And I started around on the first quarter round and I felt so bad I just couldn't make it. I stopped and I raised my hands up to heaven. I said, Jesus, you're going to have to heal me. Now, this is what's important. Something came off of me like a garment. Something came off of me. <laughs> it came off me like I was taking off a sweater. It just lifted up off of me and then like it went. It was the flu. See, God let me experience that. We don't realize sometimes what all is happening. You know, we have to be careful in our judgment of others. I'm gonna share this, and I'm, I'm sharing a lot because I want I want to I want this to be thorough as I possibly can make it because I want you to hear what I'm saying. I want you to be able to distinguish these gifts. When we were first got when we first started the church. We're in the we're in the house. The spirit is high in the house, and we're having a great time. And I'm 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 standing up. I'm praising the Lord, and and I know the spirit is high. Everybody's worshiping, and I see the spirit come out of the sky, right. And right after that. I, I recognize the, 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 the spirit, I called it, the, back then I called it the spirit of prophecy. And it is in a sense. But I start speaking in tongues. Like the gift of tongues was on me. There's a difference in tongues and gift of tongues. Two different things. The gift of tongues was, was flowing, diverse kind of tongues, however you want to say it. it. It was flowing through me. I had... The interpretation in me. I knew what, what was being said. The interpretation was in me. But the same God that that spirit had came out of gave the interpretation. It was exactly what God had gave me. He said, well, what you talking about, Paul? Because a person ain't right right now, God can deliver him, start using him immediately. <laughs> Hello, and you can't tell. You don't even know they delivered. You know they were they were in trouble last time. They were they were, they were all bound up the last time you seen them. But God can do a work in a person like that. You say, well, brother Paul, that's not scripture. Yes, it is. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> you say it ain't scripture. Yes, it is. Peter. They are ministering. They go to this, this, this guy's house and his, and his daughters got saved. As soon as they got saved, they prophesied. Y'all remember that? As soon as they got saved, they prophesied. What do you mean, Brother Paul? They weren't even saved. They belonged to the devil. But as soon as they got saved, God was able to use them. That says, that says, what I was what I was just explaining in that in my circumstance, but it also takes me to something even deeper. Think about it. Think about it. Because you God uses you with a gift, that don't mean that you know spiritual giant. <laughs> These people just got saved and God using them to prophesy. Regardless of how many gifts you got, that don't necessarily mean that you've attained, you've arrived. You're not all that. You're not even a bag of chips. Hello, are you with me? They they just got saved and they prophesied. You say, well, wait a minute, they can't prophesy. They have to go to school, they have to go to Sunday school, Bible study, and they have to spend two years. No. God can use whoever he wants, whatever he wants. And he can clean you up to do it. Are you with me? He can clean you up and do a work in you 
right away. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to through. I'm through. Another, another person, Kenneth Hagen, years ago, he said he had something that he wanted done in the church and he was praying about who was going to head it up. So he said, I think I'm going to ask this lady to to hit to 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 to, to uh, head up this ministry, and and she's a, been faithful. She's a tither. This is what he said. This ain't me. This is what he said. He said she's been faithful to the ministry. She's a tither. She, she you know she yeah you know, she she's just everything. She's never taken on any responsibility. So I'm going to give her this responsibility. And the Lord said, No. Don't give it to her. Give it to John. And he said, but no, Lord. Last year, John was caught in adultery. I, I counseled him. I know he was caught in adultery. You know? He said, yeah. God said, yes, but John repented. And I can, and he, he'll never do that again. But that lady even though she comes to church on a regular basis, she do everything you tell her to do. I can't get her to do nothing. <laughs> Hello? Just because you go to church on a regular basis, just because you're there when the door is open, that don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. It means you go to church. Hmm? Hello? You got, you got a lot of people think that, that because they go to church, they save. Hmm? They go to church and they see what everybody else is wearing. Okay, I cover everything up. I wear loose clothes, long clothes, and all of that's fine. I look like a Christian. I go to church. Every Sunday I go to church. People think you're a Christian. You go to church every Sunday. But going to church don't make you a Christian. Amen. Huh, I'm over. I try not, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to stay with an hour. <laughs> I'm trying to stay. Shut up, Rudy. Shut up, Rudy. Shut up, Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy, Rudy, no. <laughs> One of the brothers in the church used to sing a song when I go too long. He says, it's getting late in the evening and the sun's going down. <laughs> but anyway, I could go on and on and on and on. I, I, I really feel I should, but I won't. Amen, because I want to be able to, to thoroughly investigate this. We're not through with, with this. This is just the beginning. We got at least one more session, maybe two, on discerning the spirits. We're going to talk about, uh, where is it at? Uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about discerning how discerning a spirit operates on different ministers, ministries, how it operates on, on, on uh, intercessors, how it operates on teachers and pastors. Amen. It's, 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 and, and, and one of the things that you have to learn that, that, that discerning of spirits operates at different levels on different people for whenever it needs to be. Discerning of spirits can be turned up really high. I remember I was watching Sid Roth one day, had this man on there. He said for a year, discerning of spirits was, 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 was uh, turned on at such a high level everywhere he went. He saw spirits in people on top of buildings that was controlling the, 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 the operation of, of, that, of, of that business. Everywhere he looked, he saw spirits. He didn't just see demon spirits. He saw angelic spirits. Depends on what God is using you for. Depends on what you, you how high is turned on. And, and if he needs you and you are available then he will use you at a higher level at times and then drop you back to your normal level. Amen. But he may take you there and then increase. So discerning of spirits, like a lot of other gifts, they have levels. Every gift have levels. Have you ever seen some, some, some people, their, their preaching gift is even even higher than others. Some people are teachers. And teaching, 
A lot of people don't like teaching because it's not exciting like preaching. But there is an anointing there too. But you have to have ears to hear. And there is deliverance there too. But you have to have ears to hear. Because it ain't knocking you down like preaching does. Then it's different. I'm shutting up. <laughs> stop, Rudy, stop. <laughs> Designing of spirits, amen, part one. Amen, amen. So today, before we, before we, before we, before we dismiss or do anything else, I want you to unmute yourself, all of you. Unmute yourself. Now, talk to me. Tell me your experience on deserting your spirits. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks. What's your name, son? <laughs> Give me your name. I, I know who you are, but for, for, for the audio. Rudy. Okay. Uh, um, the sermon of spirits is something that God gives all of us. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned from the day I came to Christ, the day I got saved, um, I don't know if we have time. I want to... Make it short. Um, on that day, on that particular day, uh, my mom had passed away. Mm. On that very same day that my mom passed away in this house where I'm at, um, and they came and put her in a black bag and took her away. Mm. I I was not a Christian. I didn't know anything about God. And on that day, I felt like I was going to die. Like, going deep into the worldly things or the evil things that I used to do, which we all do when we're not in Christ in different ways. Um, but that day, the Lord sent a preacher to, the, to this house. And that preacher came that night, and uh, and he came to preach in the living room. I was in this very room where I'm at now, in the van. And I went out there, and I heard the preaching. And when I, before going out there, I was crying because I was very sad. I was very angry, uh, mixed emotion. And when I heard the word of God, I felt something deep inside of me and when the preacher made the call of who wanted to receive Jesus as the Lord and Savior um, I took a step forward but I heard a voice clear voice that spoke to my spoke to me and said don't walk don't go forth <laughs> know who that I, was <laughs> I spoke to that voice nobody else heard it by me and I spoke to the voice and I said, no, I'm going forward. I'm going to receive Jesus. Amen. 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 When I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, uh, I felt the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I started crying. But it was not a cry of sadness. It was a cry of joy. When, when I felt the presence of the Lord in my life, I came back to the room right here, and my wife was right here in this room, and I came back to this room, and I was laughing of joy, and she said to me,